Hmm. This that works. Anyways. Hi, this is Rain with Better Tattooing, and today let's talk about some uh, ways to help tattoo better. Let's talk about pigment viscosity. I don't know why I said that. All right. Thank you. Pigment viscosity. Why is this important? So it really is going to change the performance, right, of, of your tattoo. If you can control how fast that the pigment comes out of the tube or goes into your client's skin. So modifying it when we're, when we're working on the fly, especially after you've gotten started with something these things that aren't working well, is really key. Now, to preface this, if you have a pigment that already has a bunch of performance enhancers in it, right, surfactants, um, then doing something like this is probably not rock recommended because there's a ton of people who have spent a ton of time trying to already define exactly how these pigments should work. And if you start adding new things to those pigments, you can really change how they work. So uh, with a bit of caution, I mean, you can do whatever you want to, of course, for your own people, but um, don't expect any type of consistency across brands if you're using these tricks. This is specifically for pigments like I use that have no surfactants in them. It's just alcohol, water, and pigments. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna think about our thin and our thick pigments on a linear graph, right? And it's kind of funny because as we start thinking about how these things go, we don't have to really modify our pigments too, too much. <laughs> uh, unless we start getting to extremes. We're not gonna be talking about outliers today, right? But there's only a few things that we need to think about when we're doing this, anyways. Um, if we need to thicken our pigment, usually what we're gonna have is we're gonna have thinner skin, right? Uh, we're gonna have older skin, or we're going to have, right? drier skin. So what do I mean by this? Thin skin is going to be spots in the body where they're going to be prone to blowing out, right? We get the ditches, we get the collarbone, armpits, back to the knees, any of those spots where the skin is really thin and really elastic. Having thicker pigment will slow down the actual transfer of the pigment into the skin and can leave you with better quality results. Yeah. Same with like old skin, old skin is thin, it's papery, right? If you go to hit it with a, a coil machine, you run seven and a half volts or something with a 13 round and you try to drop in some plain black without any type of thickening agents in it, that is going to blow out like a nuke, right? So thickening it up will slow that transfer of pigment into the skin. You may still bruise or break their skin entirely, but hopefully it'll end up with less in there and it will heal out a bit better. The last one is dry. Thickening it up is also going to help moisturize the skin as we go. <laughs> it'll also just slow it down. With, with thin skin, or with dry skin, we make it thicker because all of the skin without that moisture, it started to clump back together, right? So when we're striking with the needle, we're causing a much greater amount of trauma because the skin is just at that space, right? And once we've gone over it a few times, past all of the extra skin that we're picking up in our needles, we're gonna start having a greater chance of blowing out because that's just what's going to happen with all that additional trauma. So having thicker pigment is actually gonna slow down the chances of that happening. I mean, still practice good technique, right? On the opposite one with this, right? With thinner pigments, we're gonna have the meatier spots of the body, right? We're gonna use them on younger skin and skin that is like well moisturized. So, and I said moisturized instead of wet because some people don't like the word wet. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this is pretty simple, right? It, it, we're going to be changing how thick our pigment is along this sliding scale, right? In the middle is just average whatever type of person, you know, 25 to 42, good skin health. They don't come in baked in the sun. Uh, relatively healthy and that happens, right? Um, so how do we thicken our pigment? We thicken our pigment with uh, vegetable glycerin. Uh, <laughs> bush. Anyways, uh, and you can get this stuff anywhere, right? You get your food grade, 99% uh, pure 
because I can't make 100% pure. But you can get 99.999 food grade stuff. And what you're gonna do is just keep it in one of your little pinchy bottles. If you can go and get like a clean autoclave bottle, you'll dump that stuff into it. Uh, and then you just dispense it drop by drop into whatever pigment that you're using and it will make it thicker. Cool, right? Uh, if we wanna thin it out, this, all we need to do is either add distilled water uh, or alcohol, which preferably it's ethyl alcohol, uh, vodka. Look at that high test stuff. Um, that's, that's it. It's pretty simple. I mean, if you start adding too much of this stuff, you know, pass like a drop in the number nine or 13 uh, ink cap, it's going to end up acting like you just adding distilled water to it, which is going to make a wash. So be very careful with the quantities of, of this stuff when you start adding it. And I mean, you don't want pigment that is so thick, like uh, Sobo used to make this, this blue, uh, I forget what the name of that brand is right now. It's so weird that I don't remember that. Um, stable, stable pigments, dark blue. And it was like, it was just like frosting. It was so thick. Uh, it was difficult sometimes to put it into the body, but eventually once you got like worked out a little bit, picked up a little bit of the exudate from the body, it would thin out and it would just fly in. Um, but first pass is always a little bit of a butt. Anyways, if you do that and you start making it too thick or it is too thin, it's just gonna remove that performance. Uh, barrier that you're trying to achieve um, and it's it's going to make it much more difficult to actually do the tattoo so trial and error you know if you're going to do this and try to figure out how pigment works with different stuff try it on yourself first uh, if you're in a licensed tattoo shop always good uh, or have a friend come in if you don't want to have them as a friend anymore it's a great way to learn about pigment viscosity anyways that's it for today uh, hopefully this helps like subscribe to all that stuff become a member so we can keep making this stuff. It's a buck a month. Or buy a hat. I'm going to have some links down there. Anyways, that's it for today. It's Ryan from Better Tattooing. Signing off. Hey, hey, hey.